Night breezes seem to whisper I love you Birds singing in a sycamore tree Dream a little dream of me Say nighty night and kiss me Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me While I'm alone, blue as can be Dream a little dream of me Stars fading, but I linger on, dear Still craving your kiss I'm longing to linger till dawn, dear Just saying this Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you And in those dreams, wherever they be Dream a little dream, dream a little dream Dream a little dream of me uh, Just to get us started having a look at this Les Paul Mahalo ukulele Or rather have a listen to it in its ac acoustic mode. It's an electroacoustic instrument. So that's pretty much what it sounds like for accompaniment purposes. Uh, it's not a great sounding ukulele acoustically, but it's okay because that, after all, is not its prime purpose. Its prime purpose is that you can plug it in, amplify it, and manipulate the sound to your particular choice um, so first of all let's just talk a little bit about what a Mahalo Les Paul ukulele is Lester Paul first to give him his proper name uh, started messing about with guitars when he was a kid and uh, started developing the solid electric guitar around about the early 1950s um, I'm not one of these instrument buffs that keeps all the dates and other trivia in their head so I'm sure you can check that out if you want to see whether I'm lying through my teeth or not. Uh, anyway, Les Paul as he became known and put his name on the Gibson Les Paul guitar uh, which has remained much the same ever since uh, gave us this shaped guitar which is a guitar shaped guitar but the thing that's unusual about it is this cutaway here and it came in many color forms and one of them was called the Black Beauty so this is obviously an approximation of the Black Beauty and I say it's an approximation because of course this the, the main difference is that this is an acoustic instrument that can be amplified as opposed to Les's invention which was solid uh, solid wood. Um, I will mention that although, although that they ended up as guitars made, made by the Gibson Company, um, his experimentations took part on old Epiphone guitars which uh, he chopped about to reach his end and then this is a little bit of a, a throwback to that bit because you see the asymmetric profile of the peg head, um, this, the little volute is in off center as opposed to in the middle. That's an epiphone thing. Uh, and I made a four par there because I called it a peg head. And of course, it is not a peg head because it doesn't have pegs, it has worm and pinion tuning machines, much the same as a guitar. So it's, it should more accurately be called a machine head. And these originally were made by a company called Cluson and they have that nice sort of pear shaped buttons as you see but they're lovingly known in the business as Minto pegs because they're the same colour of nut all Mintos um, which is just a little by the way let's look at what really a Les Paul is all about obviously it has to be amplified 
and in the case of the Les Paul guitars they had magnetic pickups because they had steel strings. These have nylon strings but some bright spark at some point discovered that if you compressed some kind of a crystal you produced a transducer pickup that is something which actually takes its vibrations from the, directly from the strings as opposed to a signal in the air. Um, where is the pickup? It lies underneath the bridge saddle and while we're in that neck of the woods you can't see the pickup so I'm going to show you something that you can look at. The bridge saddle has kind of kinks cut out of it uh, which is known in the trade as compensation. Compensation means that some of these strings are actually minutely longer or shorter than their next door neighbour and basically the reason for this is that thicker strings need a longer sounding length than the thinner strings which will help to make it play more accurately in tune. So that's what compensation is all about. Um, which helps the intonation, which is the relationship of the strings to the frets. Anything with a fixed fretted fingerboard needs some compensation so as it will play more in tune because it's not a natural thing to do. Anyway, enough of the lecture. <laughs> Let's talk about the business end of it. So the pickup's under the bridge, uh, but it needs activating. And it's activated by a PP9 a PP3 battery which is a 9 volt battery in that little compartment there. That fires up the pickup pick up and its tone and volume controls. Next door to it, excuse me I've got hiccups if you think I'm speaking peculiar it's because I've got hiccups, sorry about that. I'm not going to uh, sabotage this recording just for the sake of a few hiccups. So that's where you hitch it to your amplification, whatever it may be. I will say at this point in time, don't expect absolutely wonderful results from an amplifier unless you paid at the very least as much for it as you have the instrument you're amplifying. You, you, to get a good amplified sound you have to pay money I'm afraid. Uh, the other side we have a little, on the driver's side, we have a little control console where you have a volume control which speaks for itself and you have a tone control which perhaps doesn't. Tone relates to treble tone. Uh, so if you want it to sound more like a guitar you turn it on. If you want it to sound more mellow and a bit more ukulele-like you roll it off. Okay, On my amplifier as well as a treble control there is a bass and a middle control and a middle control is absolutely vital if you want an instrument to sound well balanced and not ultra bassy or ultra tinny. Uh, more about the amplifier later. Right so that's taking care of the electrics. Let's look at the playability of the thing. The main thing where this comes into its own as being a copy of Les Paul's guitar is Les did something um, rather outlandish and that is he made the neck a bit longer or rather situated it in such a way so you had more frets available clear of the body. Uh, I think he had about 16 on his uh, guitar. Anyway, a normal soprano ukulele has 12 frets clear of the body. This Les Paul model has 14 and it has in fact 20 frets in all as most instruments would have 18, this has got 20 frets in all, so you've got an extra two frets and those extra two frets are clear of the body. But you can still play the ones on the body because that's what the cutaway is for, to give you access to all the frets. And if you've got fine and delicate fingers you'll be able to make use of them all, I guarantee it. The other less poorly thing, apart from these trapezoidal shaped markings, which is typical Les Paul guitar, is that the fretboard is bound with ivory coloured plastic binding all the way around and it, it covers in the rough ends of the metal frets and makes it easier to slide up and down the 
neck with great alacrity just the way Les used to okay uh, incidentally if you've never heard Les Paul in your life do look on YouTube and find something atypical of Les Paul and his lovely wife Mary Ford uh, I think probably my favorite is how high the moon <laughs> that'll blow your mind anyway I'm not going to try anything Les Paul like when I demonstrate this electric but before I get onto that I will just say that two things. First of all, it comes with this lovely little gig bag which is fleecy lined and it's made of leatherette with a zip round which fits very well and the fleecy line of course uh, protects this rather swish finish and this particular colour version is known as the Black Beauty uh, so what else can I tell you about it? Well firstly I can tell you that the tuning that this is in at the moment uh, which is a standard soprano C tuning has a high fourth which is fine if you're strumming chords but it doesn't really help if you want to play single string melody you, if you want to do that you really need a wound, a low wound fourth string so that if this, this is a high G you want a low G. I'm going to show you what I mean in a minute because here's one I prepared earlier. In fact, <laughs> I prepared this about five years earlier because this was one of the first electric ukuleles I ever bought and uh, I was so enamored with it I bought another couple. So I ended up with uh, one in C, one in D and one in E flat. Um, Actually, one in F, but that was so that I can play in B flat and E flat as well. So there you go. Uh, oh, before I actually get down to business, I show you another couple of Les Pauly things on this ukulele of mine, and that is I fitted strap buttons fore and aft, one on the bottom and one on the heel cap, and uh, this is two points where the wood is strongest and. The strap, of course, is just like a third hand. It gives you more support and you can find your way around on it. I've forgotten quite another thing which I'm going to show you. And that is, I've also fitted, if I can get it in focus, uh, a Les Paul style pick guard there out of imitation tortoise shell on a white ground which shows off the lovely grain of it, if that grain is the right word. Um, I also fitted a black one to my partner's Les Paul ukulele so we wouldn't get them mixed up. <laughs> anyway, enough of this. You see we have the, the low fourth string there, which means you can go from back to front, up and down, without running out of road. I'm going to switch this on now, but first of all I'll just show you the difference. Playing amplified is not really just about volume, it's about manipulating your tone uh, to whatever you choose really. Uh, I like it nice and mellow and ukulele sounding and I also like a little bit of echo which helps to uh, smooth the path, path, path of the song. Uh, so this amplifier which is a nice little Fender 15 watt reverb amp the reverb is the thing that gives you the echo. So here it is acoustically and here it is with a little bit of volume and a little bit of reverb. And I'm going to play you out with the same tune but without the singing to mar it. And um, if you've got any queries remember don't email me, please phone me. Okay? Hope you've enjoyed this little bit of self-indulgence and uh, do ring me if you want to talk about it and by all means please buy the ukulele if you want to. I'm ready. Bye now. <laughs>